Hello guys and welcome to the series of shell scripting. In this video, we are going to talk about variables and along with that we will talk about their properties. So let's dig in. A variable is a character sequence which is used to store some data. The data could be numbers, strings or file name or device name etc. Right? Now to create the variables, I'll go to the documents and I'll create a script file and I'll define my shebang with the interpreter program as slash bin and slash bash. Okay. Now to define any variables, you can use lowercase characters like a to z or you can use uppercase character that is capital A to capital Z or you can use the digits that is from 0 to 9 or you can use underscore. So a variable name is allowed to have these characters and also the variable's name cannot be started with a digits okay for example if i'm writing here 0 abc it will be an invalid variable name but on the other hand abc 0 will be taken as a valid variable name okay so a variable name can have only these characters and at the beginning we cannot have the digits right so i'll create a variable here with the name where okay so we can either use the lowercase characters or we can use the uppercase characters but a common convention is to use the uppercase variables name in shell script okay so i am using here where as the variable name and i'll use the equals to which is used to assign the value and i'll simply write here 45 okay so this is our variable number one similarly i can define another variable let's say where one and i'll write here apache okay and along with that I'll use another variable with the name where to and now I will write here this is good okay but this value is not allowed to be stored in any variable why because this value is containing the white space so to overcome it whenever you have the space then always use the quotes okay so either you can use the single quotes or you can use the double quotes as a good practice we should always use the quotes okay around the value in this way okay i'll save it and i'll make it executable plus x script okay and currently if i execute it we will see nothing is printed here okay let me clear it and i'll edit it again now how can i access this variable to access it i'll have to write here dollar and then the variable name okay variable name for example let's say that i want to access the variable where for that i can write here echo dollar where okay similarly to access variable number two i can write here dollar where two okay so if i save it and now if i run it then you will see the variable names are getting accessed okay so if you will see the script this is our script and now let me pull it down okay and this was giving the value of where so where value was 45 so this was the output that we get and then the value of the where to that is this is good so in the output we got the this is good now during accessing our variables there are various critical points that you need to remember first of all we have the concept of curly braces okay so how does it helps for example let me clear it and if i simply write here i'll concatenate the string this okay right simple string right so i'll save it and now if i try to execute this one then the lines will be concatenated okay but suppose instead of writing here this if i try without using the quotes in that case also our string will be concatenated right but suppose in with this case i want to bring the output as 45 this okay without any spaces here right in that case i'll have to remove the space from here but in this case it will not give me the desired output okay so this is only giving me okay why it happened because when there is no space between the variable and the string then this entire thing is tried to be taken as a variable name okay and our shell tries to find the value of this variable which does not exist in that case it gives us nothing that is empty right so the output is only the okay so again as a good practice we should always use the curly braces before accessing these variables right in this case our shell will be cleared that this part is the variable name and this is the additional string okay so if i save it and now if i again execute this script 
then you will see it is giving me 40 and this without any space right so as a good practice always use the curly braces and along with that curly braces is mandatory when you are using the array variables we will talk about the array variables in later videos so always use curly braces while accessing the variables okay this is our point number one the second very important point is while accessing the value with the double quotes in it for example i can write here where or i can use here dollar where and i'll write here curly braces also okay now what is the difference between these two for that i'll remove this line and this line also okay this also this also and as an example i'll simply use here abc asterisk okay so i'll save this file and now let me go above and now if i simply execute it i'll clear the screen first I, if i execute it you will see the output is abc asterisk and abc asterisk it is giving me the same output but the evaluation with quotes and without quotes are different so to prove it i'll simply create some files here so i'll write here touch then i'll do here abc i'll give here one two let's say five and dot txt okay and now currently if you see in our directory we have the file from ab1.txt to ab5.txt okay and in our shell script i will simply write here ls with quotes okay where right and i will write here dollar where okay so now if you will see we will have the different output okay i will clear this one here right and i'll save our script okay i'll save it and now if i try to execute it so in the first case if you see it is saying that no such file exists but in the later case our wildcards gets expanded and it shows the relative files so what exactly happened here so if i show you here in this particular case this is becoming equivalent to so i'll with the hash we can give the comments so this particular line was equivalent to ls then quotes and then abc asterisk okay so in this case it was trying to find the exact file okay so here let me clear this one and if i try to write here ls abc asterisk then it will give me error that this particular file does not exist in the later case what happened it was evaluated as ls then abc asterisk okay so here our commands is executed in this form okay and if i write here ls abc asterisk then it means show us all the files that are starting with the abc so if i press enter it will give me abc1.txt to abc5.txt right so the point here is that when you are accessing the variables with the double quotes inside of it then the value of that variable simply getting placed within the double quotes okay but when you are not using any quotes in that case the value of the variable will not be fall under any quotes okay similar case happens here also in these two lines so if i was writing there dot slash script then you will see abc asterisk that means this was this particular statement was equivalent to abc asterisk right and this particular line was equivalent to echo abc asterisk right and if i write the same thing here echo with inside the quotes then you will see here it will give me the output as abc asterisk right just like it was given here and if i write here echo abc asterisk then it will give me abc1.txt to abc5.txt okay now for the same thing let's take another example so i'll remove this line and i will simply write here abc1 dot txt and i'll write here abc2 dot txt okay and i need to do the long listing of the value all right okay so in this case what will happen this will be go as ls dash l abc1 dot txt and abc2 dot txt right as a single value but here in this particular case it will be sent as abc1 dot txt abc1 dot txt right and abc2 dot txt okay i'll save the file and here i'll simply clear it 
So now if I try to execute our file, then the first line will say no such file exists here and the second line will give us the correct output. Okay. So currently if I just move it above, then you will see in the current working directory, we have abc1.txt and abc.txt as two different files. Okay. So in the first part, what happened? It tried to access as an single file. Okay. abc1.txt and abc.txt. Right. So equivalent values is coming under the quotes. So it will give me error. In the second case, the values was without the quotes. So in this case, it will give us the correct output. Okay. So that is exactly what happened here. In this particular case, it gave us the error because no such file exists here. Right. And in the second case, it did not give us any error. Okay. So if you go above, this was our error and this was our proper output right so remember this point always now after that let's say that you want to store the output of a command to a variable so for that we have two mechanisms first is the using the backticks and another is using the parenthesis let's look at it one by one okay so i'll clear this screen first and in our script i'll remove these lines and i'll simply write here where equals to first using the backtick so i'm using here backtick Okay, and I'll write here ls dash l and after that I will have another variable with the name service and I'll define a common command here that is the system CTL status Apache 2. All right, and it will give me the status of the Apache 2 whether it is running or not. All right, so if I do here echo dollar where it will give me the output of ls dash l command. And if I do here echo dollar service, then it will give me the output of system CTL status Apache 2 command. Okay. So if I save it, I'll move it ab above. And now if I execute this one, then the output will be shown accordingly. So first it gave me the output of the ls dash l command, and then it gave me the output of system CTL status Apache 2 command. Okay. So to store the output of a command to a variable, we can either use the backtick or we can use the dollar with parenthesis. But as per recommendation, we should always use the dollar with parenthesis. The backticks rules are weird and is very difficult while you are doing the nesting. But the dollar parenthesis gives us a better visibility to run the commands. Okay. So always try to use the dollar parenthesis. Now suppose that I want to find out whether a particular service is running or not and I want the output to be in formatted way. Okay. For example, let me clear this one and I will do here system CTL status Apache 2. Okay. Now you will see this is our output and at third line and second column it is giving me the exact output that I need after executing our script. Okay. So let me clear this right now what can i do here i can use the awk command for example awk and i'll write here nr equal equal 3 that is for the third line and i'll simply write here print dollar 2 okay in this particular case it will give me inactive right so in my shell script what i can write here i can first define the variable here as service okay and inside it i will give here apache 2 okay and here while finding the status i'll write here status i will be using here system ctl status and then after that i'll be using our variable that is the service okay and then i need to use the awk command send here nr equal equal 3 and then the print dollar 2 okay and i'll simply give the output as dollar service i should use the parenthesis here okay is or i should write in the quotes is space and then the status okay status right i'll save it and now if i run this script the output is apache 2 so i have to use here status i misspelled the word so I'll save it again, I'll clear it from here and I'll execute our script. Then you will see it is giving output as Apache 2 is inactive. Now let's say that I want to find the same output for another service. In that case, I can simply change here. For example, I can write here network manager. Okay. 
and I'll save it. Now I will again execute this one and it will give me network manager is active. Okay. And if you will see in the output of system CTL status network manager, then in the output in the third line and in the second column, it is the active. So let me close it and I'll clear it. Now you can also access the shell variables and the environment variables within our script also. For example, you can simply write here echo dollar then always use parenthesis and after that shell okay or we can use here dollar then host name so we can access our shell variables and environment variables also right so i'll save it and now if i execute it then it will give me the output accordingly so my shell is bash shell then my host name is vikram and the current user is wiki right let me clear this one now one more thing that you need to remember is that all the variables that I am creating here are accessible within this script only. If I try to access it outside of these scripts, these variables and equivalent values will not be accessible. Okay. For example, if I try to access any variables, let's say echo dollar status, okay, which is this particular variable, it will not give me any output here. Okay. So these variables are local to our script and only our script can use them. So that's all for today guys. I hope you like the video. If you have any doubt, please comment it down. Thanks for watching and I have to see you in the next video.